what is going on everyone anthony here and welcome back to another video here on let's talk resident evil kicking off the summer of re was my resident evil 2002 paul anderson live commentary but it's funny because this came out literally the other day when i had that plan to kind of kick off the summer of re on this channel and uh, what did the summer of RE end with last summer? Oh yeah, the cancellation of the Netflix live action series. But now, there's this new development of the new Resident Evil film. The Umbrella Chronicles is apparently what it's called. Now this is from a day ago from Bloody Disgusting. And this is what they reported here. Obviously you have a shot here. It says, despite the mixed reaction... And this is from Mike Wilson over at Bloody Disgusting. It says, despite the mixed reaction and a lackluster box office reaction to last year's Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City, Sony is apparently forging ahead with another film. So I want to shed some light on that. Yes, it didn't really pour in uh, money like the Anderson films. Also, it was, uh, I don't know, pretty much, you know, uh, released at a time where theaters weren't really open fully and it was definitely destined to lose money but it's no surprise that the video game movies are picking up and they're making a lot of money and sony doesn't really stop with the video game stuff uh, when they see that money coming in so the city which was one of the filming locations for welcome to raccoon city will be receiving two million canadian from the government for the project which will be developed by raccoon hg film productions the same production company that was behind the 2021 film. So, same production company. Um, and then it says Sony has not officially announced a sequel to the Johannes Roberts um, directed film. But given that the credits hinted at a sequel, things are looking like it's in the works. And after all, it would appear that the sequel is taking the name from the 2007 on-rail shooter, Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles. And that's the thing with them trying to make this a direct sequel to what we got with Welcome to Raccoon City. I already am kind of checked out with that idea because it just really seems very lackluster that they would even attempt to continue what he's created. Even if he's not behind this project and they're just taking that material and moving forward with it, I just don't understand why they can't just take a few years off and reevaluate what they want to do. But, you know, they're making money. Sony's making money, Capcom's making money, and the wheel keeps spinning. So I understand these movies don't really take a break when they come out of uh, the retirement, so to speak, after the Paul Anderson films. So I really don't understand why, uh, you know, we have a uh, a need to, uh, you know, always try to kind of put little pieces of games together in one movie, and it kind of seems disjointed. So I really don't know. When I hear Umbrella Chronicles, I think of the on-rail shooter, and I think of the overall story that we were shown in there with Chris and Jill taking down Umbrella in Europe, and they could do something like that. They could also make it very Code Veronica-esque. Uh, I don't know what they're going to actually do, uh, because I know Johannes Roberts expressed interest in that, but who actually knows what is actually going to happen and who signed on to what. So the thing is, is that I understand a lot of people are liking you know, what he's done over the Paul Anderson films, and I know people that feel the opposite. So wherever you fall into this, you might be excited for this. But for me, I'm not really excited about this little news blurb here. And it probably is true, because a lot of times when funding gets, you know, thrown in for these, you know, places that they're filming and all these projects that are, you know, under different code names and stuff like that, uh, this being Umbrella Chronicles could just be uh, a code name for something else, or it could be the actual name, uh, considering it's, you know, with Sony Pictures and stuff like that, it's lining up to be exactly what they want to do. They want to capitalize on all the video game movies that are making a lot of money, whether they're live action or animated. Uh, they are making a lot of money. So I can see them doing this sooner than later. Uh, it didn't really make a lot of money. You know what I mean? I think it only made around like $46 million worldwide. Um, but it didn't really, you know, push the uh, push that needle like they wanted it to because the Paul Anderson movies made a lot of money and I don't know what exactly they're going to do to kind of recapture that hype or buzz, especially if it's inconsistent. Um, 42 million worldwide with the box office and on a 25 million budget. So with marketing and stuff like that kind of lost money and I just don't, 
I don't know. I, I think they're trying to maybe rush this out and then put it out in the climate of theaters now, which, you know, still people aren't going to the theater as much, but it depends on what is actually in the theater and what brings them out to see it, you know, because a lot of people just prefer to stream it at home or just wait for it to come out. And a lot of the movies that come out nowadays are just kind of like, you know, very few and far between of like movies that are actually good or movies that bring you out to the theater. So I don't know what their plan is here. I really don't know what characters they want to continue to to use if they're going to be using our Raccoon City survivors from the Welcome to Raccoon City, peppered in with more Ada and Wesker to bring in that story, to establish Wesker more as a villain. And uh, I don't really know where they can go from there in terms of like what game they're going to really make the background of this next film. I really don't know. But again, they're going to make them whether we like it or not. So, of course, I will keep everyone in the loop as this kind of unfolds. But, yeah, I'm not really looking forward to this. It just doesn't really seem like Welcome to Raccoon City got me excited for more live-action RE. Between that and the live-action Netflix series, in my opinion, it just made me more bummed uh, to see what they're doing with live-action RE now. So, But, of course, as a fan, my fingers are always crossed. But I think... I would have been a little bit more excited if this was continuing off of its own, or I'm sorry, kind of starting from scratch instead of continuing off of what Johannes Roberts did with Welcome to Raccoon City. And I understand a lot of people were saying that Johannes has come out and said, you know, they were limiting him with the studio and that it wasn't exactly how he would have liked it. I understand that, and I just want to let it be known that I've never just specifically blamed Johannes. I've always blamed Sony Pictures and the studios and the people that write the checks and make these big corporate decisions with these studios. And it's always a mess. It's always just in the wrong hands. So I think Johannes is part of that, but I don't think he's the sole reason. But I think the way to kind of wipe that slate clean completely would be to just start over. But, you know, I I don't know. I guess they're going to be going off of the uh, the first film and making a sequel to Welcome to Raccoon City. So that's what we're getting. So what are your thoughts on this down below? Uh, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe if you're new, and stay tuned as the summer of RE continues. <laughs>